Because I'm working with a uh, 70-day International Scout 2. This is a uh, it's a uh, it's a Chrysler transmission. It's a torque clutch 727, and I'm uh, draining, actually changing the transmission fluid. Uh, I just cut to the chase here. What I did here, because everybody says it's a mess. You can see I've laid down a bunch of stuff under under my vehicle here, catch pan, trays, and all that. And just to keep it from being a major mess, I went ahead and uh, loosened them all the way around, and then just loosened them more on this this top side here. Just a uh, half inch, half inch bolts. And I'm just gonna. I've got other things I need to do uh, that I'm working on, so I'm gonna go ahead and. Uh, I'm doing other things on the truck, so I'm gonna let this thing drain like this for a while. I think this is the easiest way to do it, just to go ahead and kind of burp one side here and let it just drain until it gets to where it's hardly draining at all. And then you can go ahead and take the rest of the pan off. But basically that's what I'm doing. I'm gonna crack one side here. And then once this is done draining, uh, go ahead and uh, pull the pan, change out the uh, filter inside, and then I put another gasket on there. All right, we're back here. Um, you see I got the pans off. And didn't make too bad of a mess. I think if you'll just basically take your time, undo all your screws. And I kind of left that far corner over in this area here. Let it get a little loose so it would kind of steer everything. And it basically spilled around this area here. And then basically I kept lowering it, lower it, lower after it once it slowed down and just let it all kind of drain to here. But I have very little spillover, but at least it didn't splatter everywhere like what I've been told. So Next thing you gotta do is you gotta replace this. This is your filter. You're gonna take these three, three screws off and then this should just fall off. Then you pop your new one on. And then uh, when I come back to us here, I'm gonna wipe all this down real well, going back with a rubber gasket. And then uh, you'll, you'll put all your, I'm gonna put all the bolts in loosely. Kind of semi, not snug, but just down to where they're just loot, you know, kind of just barely tight. Then I'll start uh, working them down. They said about 15 foot pounds per screw, so I'll probably go seven. Kind of go kind of create an offside off star kind of pattern and then take it to 15. So I'm going to do two series of tightening here. Okay, here's what my kit came with. I got this from uh, O'Reilly's. Here's the Wix. This is for a 78 International Scout. Uh, this kit came with filter and it came with two different gaskets. I guess it's made to fit a couple of other uh, uh, vehicles. But you know, obviously this is one for a different pan, but here's my match here. Um, the guy that rebuilt this transmission a good while ago for me um, didn't use any kind of Permatex that I can tell. Uh, I've had mixed people tell me they smear a little bit of layer of Permatex on top of the pan if they clean it up and put that on there, but you know, he didn't do that. So uh, I may look online just to see and I get back with you on that, but you know, my, my transmission rebuilder did not do that and it's just now started to leak. So. Uh, you know, you kind of use your own judgment on that. So, yeah, this kit was about about eight bucks, eight nine dollars, and it came with the filter and the gasket. Uh, so I went ahead and uh, cleaned out the pan. Um, I called the people that did my transmission just to ask them. They said they don't use any silicone; it's just straight rubber. But I may use it for all these little uh, all these little indentions right here. I may stick a little bit in here. It looks like there was signs of some of it there, just in the indention parts. Uh, I'll think on that, but I, you definitely want to clean your pan out. It had a little bit of metal in there just from wear, but I cleaned it all out and uh, cleaned off the other side. I'm going to spray paint this while I've got it off, just some kind of a gray or whatever before I put it back on. Okay, here's the new filter installed. Again, there's these three screws. Put back in, and, you know, as tight as you can get in with the screwdriver without going crazy on it, because it just needs to be snug in there. And there's also a little hole that lines up with it in case you lose track of where it is on the back side. I went ahead and used some steel wool and cleaned off this edge all the way around, just to make sure there's no debris on it. Um, I'm still debating on whether to come in here with just a little bit of a. I'm not sure. I'm gonna wait, make the final decision. But maybe adding a little bit of uh, Mr. Gasket stuff right in these little slots, just to give it a good seal on the edge since it's so flat. Other than that, uh, start wrapping it up here, get this bottom pan on. Again, I'm going to go, the shops are telling me 15 foot-pounds per screw. So I'm going to kind of do like a star pattern, just like I would like a tire. Opposite, do, do 7 foot-pounds, and then finish it out with the same pattern up to 15 foot-pounds all the way around until it's on. And then just fill it up, and that'll do it. Okay, I did mine a little different. I talked to different people, and I've heard different stories, but... Um, I went ahead and put just a real thin, smooth layer of, uh, of this uh, 
the stuff on it, mainly because I like that I can, you know, I got time to let it kind of adhese and then to hold the gasket in place. I don't get, I can get it nice and smooth. So I'm using it really to hold the gasket kind of in place. But then I'm gonna set it in there and I'm gonna screw it on it, but leave it loose overnight. Let the let the stuff kind of stick on both sides. I went ahead and did the underside of the car also. And then uh, I'll, I'll snug it up tomorrow. I'm gonna make sure that it has a chance to kind of adhese before I squeeze it all out. So I talked to different people and some use this, some use this stuff here or stuff like this. Uh, but uh, I um, decided to go with a little bit of it just to kind of, I mainly want to keep my gasket held in place. I just put a very, very thin layer, just finger smooth. So now my gasket's on here pretty, pretty good. So it won't move when I get it in place. I didn't want to get any kinks in the gasket. So I did use a little bit to hold the gasket in place. And uh, that's mainly where all I use it, just to keep the gasket stuck to the pan really well before I fasten it. Right. Well, you can see the finished product, the pan's in place. Uh, you can let's see the little bit of the orange coming out there, but I just wanted to make sure that gasket was on there. Not, that was my reason why I changed it, my seal was leaking. Um, and there it is, that's uh, installed. Also, one extra note, when you go to, on this model, when I put the filter in, this is an older car, it's a 78, there was no uh, uh, ring that's uh, part of the gasket that, that forms a suction seal. This gasket didn't come away if you're doing a later model truck. Make sure if there's a uh, round gasket that came with your kit, make sure you get the one out of there because it can get sucked up into the uh, suction port of the transmission. This is a note for the newer model transmission. Mine uh, did not come with that. It wasn't made with that suction ring. Good luck with yours.